Howdy everybody, I'm Keith Warren and welcome to Deer and Wildlife Stories and to East Central Illinois where we're in the Midwest at Mills View Whitetails. And then later on in the show, we'll be heading to the Lone Star State. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Now this is my second time to visit Millsview Whitetails. The first time was actually two years ago, but I'm telling you in two years a lot can change on a deer farm. And Greg has been telling me about everything he's got going on and I'm excited to see it. All right, so two years ago we were out here and uh, we had a deluge. I mean, it rained oh. like crazy and here we are. Uh, it rained yesterday hard and I thought we were gonna get rained out today, but uh, it's, this afternoon is pretty nice and we're gonna start out showing you at Millsview Whitetails some yearlings. Now, this pen of yearlings is beautiful. I'm comparing this to what you had a couple years ago when I was here and I mean, these guys look great. So what do you think about them? I'm, I'm tickled to death with the yearlings this year, Keith. Um, all of them are consistent, you know, just a nice, Typical box frames. I we we like our typical deer. So I if I get yearlings that look like this group, then I'm I'm happy because I know what they're going to look like at, at two and three years old. Yeah, and so, and so yeah, speaking of two and three year olds, the, there's a couple of bucks in here that are not yearlings. These are what they're three year olds out there. Then? I got two three year olds out here. A couple reasons. Just wanted to not overcrowd the, the two and three year old pen and then uh, keep these yearlings in check a little bit when they shed before we move them. It's kind of nice to have them maintain a pecking order a little bit too. So. Yeah. All right, so on these deer right here, uh, as far as were they live bred or were they artificial inseminated? I believe two of them are AI. Uh, the rest of them are all live cover off of the breeder bucks that we're gonna be looking at. Really? Yep. Yeah. Really, well that's, uh, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of curious as to why. And the reason why I say that is because when people uh, start breeding for some really, really, really big deer, they're most of them are artificially inseminating, so right. they can bring in some new genetics for genetic diversity, and I mean, get some stuff that hey, they they're going to take a chance. Hopefully, it blows up. Why do you choose not to do that? Uh, we did at first just to kind of get some genetics going in our herd. We we were confident and comfortable with where we're at genetic-wise with the doe herd and with the breeder bucks that we have. So. Um, it just, it just makes it easy. We like doing that. Okay. I'm going to make a point here. As you look out through here and you hear what we just talked about, it becomes, uh, at some point, a deer breeder has to say, you know what, my genetics are pretty doggone good. And you have to be proud of what you've done. You have to look at it. Now, every day when you look at, at corn growing or you look at deer growing, you don't really notice that big a difference. But if you leave for four or five days and you come back, it's like, whoa, right. looky here. So at some point, you're going to need to make a decision to either continue to AI breed with somebody else's genetics or stop for a little bit and see what your own genetics develop into. Exactly. And that's what you've done. Exactly. And, I, and it is it is awesome when you can just, when you start raising or bringing up your own genetics and you, you, you grow your own breeder buck to bring up in your own herd, that is a really good feeling to be able to just produce your own animals like that. So. And so what we're gonna do on, on, on this program, we're gonna, we're gonna leave from here. We're gonna go take a quick look at the two-year-olds. And then I wanna take a look at the bigger bucks. And I wanna see what that change of breeding philosophy has done for your herd. Sure. So let's go take a look at the two-year-olds. Sounds good. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, UBC Power Sports, 
the North American Deer Farmers Association, Advanced Deer Genetics, New Dart, Divine Genetics, the North American Deer Registry, Protect the Harvest, Headgear LLC, Southwest Fabricators, High Roller Whitetails Big Buck Draft and Premier Deer Auction, and Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics. Viewer feedback is presented by Protect the Harvest, Protect the Hunt. This comes to us off our website from a viewer by the name of James. It says, I see you talking about pedigrees all the time and the NADAR, that's the North American Deer Registry. I'm really considering becoming a deer farmer, just curious how important the deer registry is and why. James, the deer registry, in my opinion, is mandatory. For anybody who gets in the deer breeding business, the reason why, it assures you're dealing with who you say you're dealing with. What I mean, it keeps honest people honest. When you're dealing with deer, if you don't have deer in the registry, a brown deer is just a brown deer. It all goes back to pedigree. So for that purpose, I recommend every deer breeder, if you're gonna be successful in the deer breeding business, you're gonna be a member of the North American Deer Registry. If you've got a question or a comment, you can get a hold of me by going to our website and hit the Connect with Keith tab. I cannot believe, I mean, y'all have had a great year. I mean, the Midwest grows such unbelievable oh, yeah. agriculture, but you grow some unbelievable deer too. You know, we just showed y'all some wonderful yearlings. I mean, some really exceptional yearlings. Now, these are the two-year-olds, right? That's two-year-old pen, yep. All right, well, tell me about them. Um, got a nice group of two-year-olds this year. We, um, I don't know how many we've got out there now, 11, 12 that are two. There are, I think, three or four three-year-olds mixed in with them that were left over from last year, bucks that we didn't sell last year, okay. kept them another year. But actually, these two-year-olds are all out of the breeder bucks that we're getting ready to look at here in just a little bit. Okay. So well, good. Well, I'll tell you, the uh, your yearling bucks, you have really, really done a good job. The yearling bucks are beautiful. And so uh, after taking a quick look at these guys, because we don't have a lot of time because we've got another farm to go to. Right. What we need to do, we need to uh, go ahead out and take a look at the daddies of these guys right now. Sounds good. All righty. All right. All right, so we've seen the uh, younger deer. Yep. And now it's time to look at the big boys. And who is that guy right there? That is Arthur. Tell me about yeah, Arthur's a He's a five-year-old this year. Okay. Uh, he's, an, he's a son out of Archer, and Silver King's womb sister is his mother. So... Uh, it's one of the reasons we really like his breeding and like his frame. Well, we wound up, uh, uh, Archer is a deer that uh, we filmed, I believe when he was two, maybe three years old, then at Rusty Carr's place. Right. And he is a beast of a deer. He was a beast of a deer, and he, I know he threw real well, and Arthur's proof of that. But I mean, uh, on the bottom side, the Silver King side, that's really where I think a lot of that power comes from. And so, as you look at him, boy, he's gentle. He's like a gentle giant. Isn't yes, he is. Yeah, he's he's a nice one, and uh, we've been breeding him here since he was three years old. We're going to breed him again this fall. Okay. Now, uh, who's the guy way in the back back there? That is Rockin' Express. Uh, six-year-old breeder that we've had. We've had him since he was two. Okay, yep. the, the Rockin' Express is who we wound up having on the open of our show, every single show, we had him on the open two years ago. That's correct. You filmed him here when he was a uh, four-year-old buck. Wow, look at him. He's pretty, but that's the kind of deer you want to grow right there. Exactly, that's why we've kept him here to use. His production's been outstanding. Well, the reason why we picked him to be on the front of Deer and Wildlife Stories two years ago, because he was so pretty. Yeah. He's a, Pretty dear. Now, who's this guy in the middle? Who is that? That's a buck we named Rocket Man. He's a three-year-old, be a three-year-old this year. He's a Rock and Express son. Uh, got really exceptional width, 33 and a half inches wide. What's that silver on him? The Luma Shield. We had to do a little work on him. He, he got into and messed up a couple of his small drop tines, and so we had to put him down about a week ago and, and just work on him and make sure he didn't get any antler infections. We kind of use that as a spray when we're done tr working on him, so. Well, and you, I guess when you knocked him down, that's when you measured him 35 yes. inches wide. Yeah, yeah, Man. Yep. Okay, well, good deal. Now, as, you, as you're looking at these bucks, I want you to know that uh, this would not be possible without the power coming from the dam side or the female side. What I want you to know is that it's real neat to look at the bucks. The girls are really where the power comes from. And Greg sells not only bucks like this, but he also sells does. Tell them about that. Well, we really like our doe herd. We put a, an emphasis on, on the maternal side of all of our, even the bucks, you know. We're, we're picking these bucks for their look, yes, but I like to have the maternal side 
bred the way I like it, you know. So um, yeah, our does we feel are really strong at this point and we put a lot of emphasis on the doe herd. So if somebody wants more information about coming out here, Greg, give them a telephone number where they can contact okay. you. Okay, uh, cell phone number is 217-202-8644. You can reach me on that line just literally any time. I have a website, it's millsviewwhitetails.com. And I would encourage you, if you live in the Midwest, and you're interested in deer farming, interested in looking at some really big deer, purchasing some deer, come on out to Mills View Whitetails. And Greg, you've done a heck of a job. I Thank mean, you, Keith, I appreciate it. I've been gone two years, I came back, yeah. like everything got bigger and better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, well that wraps it up for East Central Illinois. And right now we're gonna head down to Texas and we're gonna introduce you to the folks with Lone Wolf Whitetails. Closed captioning for Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by G2 Ranch, where quality is our commitment. Brought to you by American Fair Chase Hunting Club. Just shut up and hunt. Woo, that's a good bow right there. Hey y'all, I'm Timmy Edwin. I'm president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club. And I got a brand new bow got here, got this sight on it. It's a range finding, heat seeking laser sight. I'm telling you folks, I can shoot a gnat off of a tick at 100 yards, and so can you. Hold on oh, there a second. Hey now, who are you? I'm Keith Warren, I got a question for you. Yes sir. A range finding, heat seeking, laser sight. Yes sir. Do you think that's fair chase? Well, I don't know. What's fair chase to you? I don't know. You're the president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club. Yes sir. And I would assume that you know what fair chase is. Never thought about it. Well, my advice to you is until you figure it out, just shut up and hunt. Shut up and hunt. I like it. Yeah. And my advice to you and anybody out there who doesn't really realize what fair chase hunting is, until you figure it out, use the hashtag on social media, just shut up and hunt. And we'd love to hear from you. What is your definition of fair chase hunting? Let us know using the hashtag just shut up and hunt. All right, so we just finished up in Illinois over at Greg's place and now we're down in Texas at Lone Wolf Whitetails. This is actually the first time I've ever been out here to Lone Wolf Whitetails and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm kind of blown away. I've been to virtually every big deer farm there is out there, but I haven't been here. I mean, he's got over a thousand animals. He's got over a hundred pens. I think, why haven't I been here before? I don't know, but I promise you, I won't go by here again without stopping. All right, so, these are all two-year-olds? All two-year-olds, yes sir. And this is the last week of August, and you can see they're in the velvet, but most of them are pretty much done growing, don't we, you think? Yes, and most, but you know, some of them grow a little slower, a little later yep. to develop than others. And some of them, will, they'll start scratching the first part of September. And some will wait till the end of September. Chuck, how long you been doing this? About 16 years, I think. And how many do you got total? About 1,100, I think kind of gets addictive, doesn't it? It does, yeah. <laughs> and how many pins do you have total? I don't, don't gamble, yeah. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't chase anything except deer. Yeah, so go. that's my hobby. Yeah. So I can't get in trouble doing that. There you go. And how many pins do you have total? About 110, 112. Oh my goodness. But you know, you come out here this time of year, in June, July, and August, every day is like Christmas. Yep. You want to say, how much more have they grown? Right. And, and it's addictive. It's just addictive. But see, folks, as we're looking at these bucks that we're showing you here, I mean, the, the bucks are in the velvet. The important thing to point out, yeah, Chuck sells bucks like this. There's no doubt about that. Most of his market, I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about what his market, what who his customer is, so to speak. But what he really wants to focus on is the does. As you look at these bucks, okay, he's got the sisters to these guys and the mamas to these guys. And it's those animals right there that he really wants to focus on and let you know, have us let you know, that those are animals that if you want to change the genetics on your piece of property, that's the way to do it with Absolutely. the moms. You, you, I have people that have already been here and picked out the doe that they wanted. Because they'd ask, well, who's his sister? And who is his sister? And who is his mother? And then they'll, that's how they pick. Just like that. The people in the know that want to improve the genetics on their ranch will pick the sisters and the mothers of the best looking bucks that we have. Because it is on the female side. I mean, as you can look, we're gonna show you, there's hundreds of bucks out here. We're gonna show you lots and lots of bucks. But as we show you these bucks, keep in mind that a mama made every one of these bucks and also made their sisters. And it's those mamas, it's those sisters 
that are the valuable ones. And we'll give you Chuck's phone number in a little bit. You can contact him if you're interested in getting some of these great genetics to put on your release properties and changing the value. I mean, it changes the property value on oh, a piece of land. Absolutely. You know, the state's been trying to grow big deer for 70 years and the biggest they can get. We probably shouldn't put this on. Sam no, we're going to put it on. Listen to this. Listen, this <laughs> but is. The, but this. the biggest deer they grow is 140 inches. Yep. And the deer breeders have been doing it 15 or 20 years. And my yearlings are bigger than 140 inches. Right. So doesn't the state do a good job? <laughs> the state does fine for what the state does. Right. And so but we wind up, deer breeder, it's like we, we do what the state does on steroids. We make it That's happen. Right. That's and, right. And, and people wind up saying, well, the state, why can't the state do a good job like that? Well, the only thing I tell people that I think a government can do better than a private landowner is fight wars. Probably so. And well, they, I mean, the, otherwise, and the I mean, state, <laughs> the state, there's no hybrid bigger, bigger or heterosis in the state's animals. They're lying bred to be small. Little pencil, little pencil antlers, little four by fours or five by five, 16 inches long, and they breed year after year. And after so, what are you going to get? More of the same, more unless the same. you put some of this out there. I mean. Right. Look at that buck, he takes that one right there. Yep. He's probably two year old, what, 270, 280, yep. 30 inches wide. <laughs> that, <laughs> he's a nice buck. But, but that is a recessive gene. That is not a dominant gene. The dominant gene is the little eight point, 130 inch deer right. that the state raises. So we try to take a recessive gene and make it dominant in the females. And that's what we offer on when we release the deer. If you're ready to get started in deer farming, go to DeerAndWildlifeStories.com and click the Get Started Deer Farming tab. All right, so you walk in the room here and you look around, it's like there's all kinds of big deer, all kinds. I mean, real big. And uh, you look on the shelf and he's got these books, these notebooks, and Chuck's kind of an old fashioned guy. I like that. Okay. He's got it up here. Uh, he doesn't, you don't look around and see a computer or him on the iPad trying to figure stuff out. He's got it right here. He's got all the records right there in those books. He's got genetics from uh, the biggest deer on earth and uh, all the old deer that people have forgotten about. I mean, Chuck's got them. And he's got semen right there behind that wall right there. Hundreds and hundreds of straws of these deer and he keeps breeding them year after year after year. And Chuck's market is different. He's not going after the quote, the breeding market like a lot of guys are. He's going after the stalker market. He's uh, helping the average guy, the guy that's got a, a piece of land that wants to make his land better with great genetics. All right, so, so tell me how you go about selling a deer. I would rather sell a group of deer, a pen, like pen 89 that's got 15 bucks in it. Right. Three euros. But people have a different idea of what they want. So mm -hmm. I let them pick the deer that they want out of the pen. So we maybe go through 20 pens of bucks. So they pick out the one, they pick out 10 or 15 or 20 or four or five right. that they like. And so uh, that, that's how we sell it. That's how we sell Most of our bucks, people have picked out what they want. Then we have to ease around out here in the in the facility in the alleys and let them separate out the ones that they want. Okay. All right, as far as does go, how do you go about selling does? The females? Yep. People will pick out the females. There. In fact, I had a guy uh, last week that wanted 20 females and he wanted to breed the three different bucks. So he picked out the bucks he wanted to breed to and the 20 does that he bred, that he wanted. And so we separate them into three pens. And so what you're gonna do is come February after they're all bred, drop them off on that piece of property and bingo, he's changed he's, his genetic structure. He's in structure. business, he's in business. Wow. So he picks the genetics of the female and the genetics on the buck. Plus how the buck looks like. Okay, if somebody wants to contact you, give them a phone number. 254-747-1037. And right now we're uh, we're just east of Waco, Texas. If y'all are interested, how far? What, 30 minutes? 30 miles. 30 miles east of Waco. Yeah. And so real easy to get to. And when you come out here, plan on spending some time because he's got a lot of deer and a lot of pins. Most of our market is is uh, pasture release, yep. females and the, and the males. Right. They're big bodies too. And what um, are you feeding? We feed record rack. Love record rack. We fed the the competition for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and did a good job, but record rack, they stay pretty close and they come out and look at our deer 
They'll see what genetic plane they're on and make recommendations in the change in the ration yep. and the mineral. And the time of year, you know, if you're lactating those, you're gonna need a little different mineral, a little different feed than the doe that's getting you ready to breed with. We like to those does to lose a little weight uh, when we wean the babies off and then start back on a weight gain just prior to breeding. Yep, that's so the same thing I do. Same about thing. 30 days prior to breeding, put them really on, put that's the fat right. back on them. Put it back on yep. them, let them start gaining. And we get a higher pregnancy rate that way. The one thing that really sets Chuck Frazier away from everybody else in the deer breeding business in Texas is they are the premier breeder, the number one breeder when it comes to pasture release females, period. So if you have a piece of property, it's high fence, it has to be high fence, and you have to have a permit through Parks and Wildlife Department, and you want to put big, great genetic female deer in it, give Chuck Frazier a call. My name is Keith Warren. I want to thank you for watching the program. If you have any questions or comments and you're watching online, go ahead and post them below. If you're not watching online, you can watch at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com 24-7. Thanks for watching.